Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Okin. I'm the screenwriter for this second installment of The Arts Incubator and I'm so thrilled to be sharing my work with you today. Now I'm a rising junior at Wesleyan University, but I first came to the Irvington Town Hall Theater when I was 16, when I submitted a short play I wrote uh, called Fishing to one of their contests. They did a production of it on that big stage and I'm so glad that they're having me back for this special series a la Zoom. The excerpt that I will be showing you now is a few scenes um, from my latest project, a screenplay that I wrote called Cookie Cutter. It's about a woman in her early 40s named Debbie who got married straight out of college, very young, but now she's a different woman. About five years ago, she decided to quit a very fulfilling, uh, flourishing career in journalism and she did it to take care of her kids, um, but she's not happy in her marriage or with the choice that she made when she was 22. This is very much still a piece in development, so I would love to hear any of your comments that you can send to itartsincubator at yahoo.com, which I'll mention again at the end of the performance, but without further ado, here's our large and wonderful cast. In our first scene, we're going to come across a young Debbie uh, when she first meets her husband, Edwin, and these are the actors in the scene. Hi, my name is Erin Birchall, and I will be reading for Young Debbie. Hi, I'm James McCarthy, and I'm reading for Young Edwin. Hi, I'm Charlotte Jones, and I will be reading for Ronnie. Hello, my name is Bryce Jenkins, and I'll be reading for the part of Charles. Hello, I'm Edwin Sanchez, and I will be narrating the action. In our second scene, you'll see current day Debbie in her friend and neighbor turned lover's home, who, by the way, is also the father of her teenage daughter's boyfriend. Hi, I'm Kelly Aston, and I'm reading for Debbie. Hi, my name is Mackenzie Knapp, and I'm reading for Mitch. And in our third scene, you'll see mother and daughter come together. Hi, I'm Alex O'Shea, and I'll be reading for Sabrina. And now you're all set. This is Cookie Cutter. Interior on a campus dining hall day. Over 20 years ago at a small liberal arts college, a young Debbie walks into the dining hall. A young Edwin who stands in the main lunch line notices her walk in, but turns back around and she doesn't notice him staring. She gets in line for the main lunch and stands behind him. They wait for a moment. You can go ahead. Oh, thanks. Young Debbie goes ahead of him. She notices him now, but they don't talk. She thinks, huh. Strange. Another day, maybe two weeks later, young Debbie walks into the dining hall and gets online behind young Edwin again. She recognizes him and stares a little this time. Young Edwin turns around. Go ahead. Thanks. She reluctantly goes ahead of him again. Yet again, they don't talk. He stares at her for a bit, but then looks away. Interior on campus dining hall, day. Young Debbie waits in a crowd for her food. Someone behind the counter calls out people's names when their order is ready. Shay, Shay, a girl emerges from the crowd to pick up her order. Also in the cluster of people, a bit behind young Debbie is young Edwin. Neither, neither one sees the other. A dining hall worker speaks into a small microphone. Edwin, Edwin, young Edwin comes up from the back of the crowd. Feeling that someone is trying to come up from behind her, young Debbie turns around and moves because she thinks she's in the way. She isn't actually in the way. You're fine. Young Edwin turns around to pick up his food and walks off. A few moments later, young Debbie gets her food from the counter and walks back to a table where her friend Ronnie is sitting. Young Debbie sits down. Young Edwin eats at a table with a few of his friends. Ronnie and young Debbie are talking, but now they look down at their food and eat. Young Debbie glances over at young Edwin. Young Edwin doesn't notice her. Young Debbie spaces out and drinks her cup of water. Young Edwin looks over and notices her. 
Realizing that she was staring, young Debbie promptly looks up and away. Young Edwin smiles and takes a French fry from the center of his table and dips it in ketchup. Young Debbie glances over again to see if he's looked away. He does as he takes down his French fry, but inevitably he glances over again. Watching him, young Debbie takes a French fry on her table, dips it in ketchup, holds it up in the air, and playfully drops it in her mouth. Young Edwin plays along and does the same with his next fry. She watches him and smiles to herself. Young Edwin holds up another fry and looks at her as if to say, I'm having another, let's do this again. She picks out another fry and holds it up to him as if to say, okay. Then they go through the odd, playful motion together, trying to mimic each other and eat the fry at the same time. Apparently, an amused Ronnie has been watching her friend for a while, but young Debbie has been lost in her own little world. Young Debbie notices Ronnie and gets startled. She looks down at the table and returns back to the real world. Ronnie looks over at young Edwin. He has done the same as young Debbie. They've been caught. Young Debbie looks up at young Edwin and smiles slightly, willing to laugh at herself. Ronnie beams. She wants the deets. How do you know him? I don't. Do you? Yeah. Edwin Buchanan. He's on basketball. Why? I've seen him around a few times. Interior college party night. Young Debbie is with Ronnie, Charles, and maybe two or three others are standing with them, presumably upperclassmen. Ronnie and Charles are there together. Young Edwin is talking with one of his friends across the room. Young Debbie sees him. Ronnie catches Young Debbie looking. Look who it is. I'll be back in a second. Ronnie watches Young Debbie walk off. Okay. Young Debbie walks over to young Edwin. Where's she going? Young Edwin sees her. Oh, she's going. Young Debbie smiles at young Edwin. Hey. Hey. Interior, Mitch's guest bedroom, day. Mitch and Debbie lie in bed. Debbie is distracted. Oh, I can't believe I left my bracelet here last time. You were freaked out. We've got to be more careful about this, Mitch. We can't go around leaving bracelets at your house. They're forgetting that it's Wednesday. Well, at least it's not Wednesday this time. Today is, in fact, Tuesday. Yeah, you got that right this time. We've just, we need to be smarter. So what's going on with you and Edwin? Oh, I don't know. It's just not right. Maybe it never was and it never will be and it's all just falling apart now. But I don't know if I can live like this anymore. You're not okay. I'm in limbo. I got married young, you know that. He proposed at graduation and this is his grand gesture. It was very dramatic and controversial at first, but I went along with it and now here we are. You went along with it? Yeah, I was young. I was scared. Oh, I really didn't want to move back in with my mother. Maybe I didn't think it through. Maybe I settled. Everyone settles. Yeah, but I was 22. You've never really talked about Edwin with me. I just like hanging out with you. It wasn't a big deal. I'm not saying it's a big deal. I'm saying a lot of women talk about their husbands more than you do. That's all. I don't know what a lot of women do. You want to see a picture of me when I was that age? Sure. Wow. Oh, I had so much potential. I don't just mean looks. I mean, I had goals. Aren't you a journalist? And a successful one at that? Yes, but I wanted to be a liberal liberated, taking charge of the world journalist. Well, maybe you don't feel the most liberated, but you are those other two. Your articles were in the Post and God knows where else all the time. You appeared on TV regularly. I was at NBC for a bit and I go on every now and then, but not regularly as it every week and not anymore. Give yourself some more credit. I mean, look how hot I was. You're still hot. 
What a waste. Not a waste. And I'm sure there was a time when you were in love with Edwin. That time is gone. Well, listen, you have kids. I know that full well, Mitch. Why do you think I stayed this whole time? Don't you think you could try to work this out? Don't you think I tried? Like you said, I do have three children with this man. What has he done when you've tried? Edwin doesn't believe in communication. He believes in telecommunication, but he's a rock. Well, that's not true because if he was a rock, then you never would have wanted to be with him. Maybe I liked how normal he was. Maybe, you know, coming from a belligerent father and a batshit mother. Maybe I liked his whole upstanding man routine. It's not a routine. That's who he is. Mitch, why are you pushing on this when you have no idea what you're talking about here? You were so in love with Hannah that it made me wish that I had that with my husband. Why do you think I liked hanging out with you guys so much? It was nice to be around good people who gave me something to aspire to. Debbie, I'm jealous of your problems. Then you haven't been listening. Oh, I've been listening. Your husband is a hamster and he likes his wheel. But you're married to a man who's maybe a little out of touch, but he isn't going anywhere. Feels like yesterday. I was sitting on the edge of the bed that we're not lying in, watching my wife die which still haunts me. And I don't think I'll ever be able to shake that feeling. It's, I'm told it's not something that just goes away. It's not like I'm just gonna wake up one morning and she's not dead. It's like, I'm always losing her. I'm sorry. I don't mean to push you or push my issues on you because you are going through a hard time, but so am I. And part of my hard time is that I cannot imagine anyone losing their spouse right now not without a good reason or really thinking it through at least, which is why when we're together, I try not to think about Edwin. Selfishly, I like that you never talk about him because then it would feel like I'm killing someone else's wife too. And that would make me a murderer. That would make me cancer. You're not cancer. You've been an incredible friend to me. I feel guilty about Hannah sometimes too. You have nothing to feel guilty about. Hannah's gone. Look, there's something else that I can't talk about with my husband, but hearing you talk about cancer, my father's dying. I might go through what you just did very soon. Oh, I didn't realize, I'm so sorry. sorry. Well, it's complicated. He wasn't good to me like your wife was good to you. I haven't seen him since I was a child, but I just want to know in, in case this hits me hard, which I think it will. What do you do? Oh, no, you don't. You do. You do, you do, you do. You just keep doing. Is it like anything else I've ever felt in my life? I don't think so. What does it feel like? I think it's different for everyone. And I wouldn't want to tell you now and make you feel worse without me to. I, I wish I could be more helpful. No, I know there's nothing you can really say to prepare someone else for death, but I want to thank you for your company, Mitch. And I, I think I need to go somewhere else. I think I'm leaving Edwin, going somewhere physically quite far away, at least for a bit, and that means I'm leaving you too. Not now, but soon. Where are you going? Italy. Venice. Wow. <laughs> I'm not hopping on a plane tomorrow, but I wanted to tell you before I did. Did you tell Edwin? No. Why? As hard as he may try, he could never be a friend like you. He can never go to Italy and go on crazy adventures with me, but I need to go. Good for you. I don't think I could have gotten there without you. Thank you, Mitch. <sighs> been my pleasure. Interior, Mitch's guest bedroom, day. Sabrina sits on the edge of the bed with her arms crossed. She is on her phone, anxious and irritated, waiting for someone to pick up. Her mother's journal is in her hands. The following is the phone call. We alternate locations between Mitch's guest bedroom and Debbie's kitchen. Hey, honey, what's going on? You tell me. What? You tell me what's going on. Sabrina, what happened? 
I don't know, Mom. What happened? Why is your journal at Jesse's house? My journal is it? Or, or should I say, Mitch's? What did you find? What did I find? You, you want an instant recap? I think it would be helpful if I knew. Jesse had a meeting with a teacher after school, but gave me the keys and told me to meet him at his house. Jesse's dad wasn't home. I was watching TV and I had to pee during a commercial break. I like to pee upstairs. I walk past the guest bedroom to go use my favorite bathroom and I find your journal laying on the bedside table. I found a cute little post-it note on it from Mitch saying that he'd give it back to you and how you're a naughty girl and you shouldn't be so sloppy next time. Winky face, smiley face, what a funny, funny joke. You guys are so bad at this, it's laughable. And unless you are fucking my boyfriend. I could never do that to you. I would never go there. But, but his dad is totally up for grabs. Sabrina, I'm sorry. You know, I, I might be happy for you if it was someone else, because I know you're not happy with dad. What makes you say that I'm not happy? Save it. You crossed a line. I know I did. How did this happen? We've been friends for a long time, and... And now you've gotten even closer. I'm glad you find this amusing. I, I find it very amusing. I think it's hilarious, actually. Because not only are you stupid assholes leaving clues around for everyone to catch like your extramarital affair is a scavenger hunt, but everything has been way too out in the open when it comes to my relationship with Jesse. You've always been over-involved with him, and now you're over-involved without my permission. You asked me for advice. And I shouldn't have. It's my relationship, and I can do it all by myself. Besides, what could I ever learn from you about relationships? The way you and dad fight about me and Jesse because you're so fucked up in your own marriage is just- Fuck off! Okay? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have- yeah, You shouldn't have done a lot of things. I hope you know that I have never talked to you that way in your life and I will never do it again. I'll never talk to you the same way again either. Did Jesse know? No. He's not back from school yet, and don't worry, I won't tell him. Your little secret's safe with me. Okay. Look, Mom, I'll, I'll call you later, but I, I don't think there'll be much to say. Sabrina. I'll give you your notebook back when I get home. Thank you for watching. Again, I'd love to hear any feedback uh, from viewers. So um, if you have any thoughts about what you just saw, please share them at itartsincubator at yahoo.com. Hope you enjoyed our show.